Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another fa episode of Family Fun Friday. I think we're on the ninth one now. Time passes so quickly. Um, so yeah, let's just hop right into it. If you hear a dog scratching himself, that's because Nerdy is scratching himself behind the camera. <laughs> um, so here is today's book. We are reading Rhyme Crime by jo John Bergerman, which is a very fun name for a very fun fellow and a very fun book. There's a little lovely picture of him. Um, so Rhyme Crime is obviously a rhyming book uh, that's really popular with kids because then they can read, well kind of read, they're not, sorry, let me do that again. <laughs> um, so that children are reading the book without actually reading the words per se, they can kind of predict what's coming next. Um, it teaches them rhyming, which is great for learning how to spell as well because then they know that a similar word, a similar sounding word has a similar spell, a similarly spell ending. <laughs> that was a jumble of words. But all right, let's just get right into it. I'm going to pause a little bit before we flip to the, um, flip every page so that that gives you a little bit of time to kind of predict what's coming next and see if you get it right. There's like lots of suspense in this book with rhymes. All right. So once upon a time, a thief committed a crime. Everything he stole was replaced with a rhyme. Hammy's brand new hat was swapped for a... Can anyone guess what it is? Cat! Meow! Glomp's lovely head became a slice of... Bread! Oh, crumbs! Army's comfy chair was switched for a... Bear! Yikes! And Tootie's loyal dog was swapped for a... Log. Bark, bark! That's not very good. And Moo Moo's... Oops, can't read. Upside down. <laughs> Moo Moo's fancy clogs were swapped for some... Frogs! Ribbit, ribbit. We're slippery, not slippers. <laughs> and Greddy's pretty house was swapped for a giant mouse. Do you have any some cheese? Eek! Marlo's happy smile became a crocodile. Oh no. And Dingle's mighty sneeze, hachoo, was swapped for a stinky cheese. Cheese? Glop. <laughs> Blue's yummy cake was taken for a Snake! Hiss. Sleepy Boomer's brain was swapped for a train! Toot toot! The thief's. Oops, sorry. The thief took Tumble's orange and swapped it with a. Can anyone guess what the next rhyme is? Hmm. Is there a rhyme? Hmm, Splorange? Smorange? Morange? Florange? Warange? Glorange? Zorange? <laughs> Dorange? Porange? Borange? There's a thief! Is this... Oh, is this the end of his tale? The thief was taken to... Jail. What a ter what terrible luck! I'm truly stuck. But the very next day, the thief had run away. How did he escape? Can anyone figure out the riddle? Riddle here. What did he swap the lock for? Something that rhymes, perhaps. the end and there are rhymes in this page too if you could figure it out 
All right. And that's the end. Um, this is Rhyme Crime again. Um, a really wonderful book. It's very fun. Uh, there's funny names and the art style is quite funky as well. I, I like everything about it. And there's like little riddles in it with the different, um, with how you swap the lock and the thing at the end. Who can comment uh, what they think the rhymes were there? That would be awesome. Um, so yeah, that was today's book. Um, since we're keeping with kind of a fun theme, uh, I also thought that I could introduce a board game, because I'm really into board games, <laughs> um, called Dixit. So, uh, as I think the producer of this game, uh, the company Asmodi, I believe, um, during the COVID uh, response, they released a bunch of their games that were available for print and play at home. So that means that you could download the file of the game and then print it out in your printer and then be able to play the full game at home. So I have the actual game <laughs> so that I could show you how to play and I will put the link in part of the description so that you can print and play your own game. And I think it's such a wonderful thing because there's a few board games like Monopoly and all that that are great games, but they take up a lot of the um, mainstream understanding of board games when there's actually a lot of ways to play and a lot of wonderful, wonderful games out there. So, this is Dixit. 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 I, I never really know how it's supposed to be pronounced, but I think it's French. <laughs> um, so you have a lovely board here if you um, get the full game, and you'll see that there's a scoring track, and that's all it is, is a fancy scoring track. You could keep track with tallies or whatever you want at home. I don't think the print and play version has a scoring track in it, but yeah. Uh, it comes with these little tokens that you could obviously use for different colors to represent who you are. Um, and these voting tokens that come oops, that correspond to the color that you chose for your character. It's gone somewhere. I'll pick it up later. <laughs> um, hopefully Murdy doesn't get to it first. So uh, let me sort these out because they're supposed to be sorted. My friends don't put my games away correctly. But anyway, uh, depending on the number of players, uh, you will have tokens ranging from 1 to 6, and that's how you vote um, in the voting part of the game. So the game works by having a deck of cards over here, and they each have very lovely drawings on all of them. They're all abstract drawings. Maybe you could find some rhyming things in there. I don't know. Um, but each player gets a hand of five cards, I believe. No, six. Six cards. Six cards for each player. Um, so, for example, this would be the hand that I have, um, and you take turns being the storyteller. So what the storyteller does is they look at the cards and they use a sentence or a song or a gesture, anything they want really, um, to demonstrate their, um, their card. Uh, so for example, if I were, I were the storyteller and I'm trying to get, um, other play tell, to tell other players to play a card, um, I would say, so, if I wanted to play this card, for example, uh, this boy at the beach looking at some pearls and some ants carrying away the pearls. Um, I might tell a story of, I don't know, um, a th oh, I guess this could go with the rhyme crime theme. Uh, stealing would be my word, or I could make up a sentence. I could say, um, stealing valuable things, or taking away what's valuable, or... You know, something like that. So then I would play this card um, face down into a pile. And other players with their hands, so let's say I don't know, I'm this other player and I was looking at my cards and were thinking about stealing as my word or sentence, um, I might choose, I don't know, maybe this one. Stealing. And then I would put this card that I think corresponds to the theme that the storyteller told, and I'll put it down in a pile and so on and so forth. And then all the players, once they have all their cards in face down, um, we would then reveal the cards that everyone put down in a table in front of us like this. So I'll say these ones. I'm just going to put a few more, for example. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's another good card that might be able to go in here. Maybe I should have planned this out. Next time I know. <laughs> um, so let's say maybe some people didn't really have a card that was corresponded to the theme really well. So let's just say these were the cards that were in play. 
So what you want to do is now you want to vote for which one you think was the storyteller's original card. So we know that it's this one, but other players didn't know that because they didn't get to see which card they put down. Because all these were face down, they were shuffled, and then now they're flipped face up. So now each player uses their tokens from one to three, since there are three players here. <laughs> um, and they put their token down for which one they think is the storyteller's original card. So for example, this person, he's going to vote two. Uh, oh, and the storyteller doesn't get to vote, obviously. So one of these people vote two. And let's say another player also votes two. Red player votes two. And then we reveal the tokens, and look, everyone got the storyteller's card correctly. So what happens when everyone has gotten the storyteller's card? It means the hint was too obvious. So the storyteller doesn't get any points, while everyone else gets three points. So both of these players that put these cards down get three points, because the storyteller was too obvious with their hints. In any other situation, so let's say someone voted one of the storytellers and one of... I can't find the red three here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> um, and another player votes, let's say this one. The person who got it correctly and the storyteller both get three points, while the person who got who deceived someone else gets another two points for doing it. So for example, if red player, oh, would it be the red player? <laughs> I'm confused now because I'm playing with myself and I've never done this before. Um, let's say if the red player who played this card, because it's red, <laughs> um, chose this one, red player was deceived by, let's say, green player. Oh, no, it would be white player because white player's voting, yes, let's see. So white player played this card, red player played this card, and the storyteller played this card because the storyteller's uh, color isn't on the board. So red, um, so white player had deceived red player. So white player gets another two points for deceiving someone, and they get three points for getting the correct answer, and the storyteller also gets three points for having their their hints be good and uh, people get it, but not, uh, it's like vague enough kind of thing. How do I really explain this? Um, it's that their hints uh, was able to um, have someone believe that that was their card, but it is not, uh, and, it's, and it's vague enough so that someone's deceived, but it's not um, so specific that everyone was able to get it, which is not a very good hint. So that's kind of how the game goes. It's more of a uh, kind of abstract, kind of thing. It, it, it feels a lot better when there's a, more people, you'll get the feel of the cards um, and how the game flows. And I should have probably planned this out. I'll keep that in mind next time I'm teaching a board game. <laughs> um, so the scoring here would happen that the, the storyteller gets three points, white player gets three points for getting it correctly, and an additional two points for getting someone deceived. And the red player uh, doesn't get any points because they didn't get anything correctly. So that's generally how the game goes, and then the turns will pass on, and the red it'll be the red player's turn, and it'll be the white player's turn, and they'll be back to my turn. And I realize now that I should have definitely been able to explain that better if I had prepared, and that's a lesson in preparation. Um, so yeah, thank you for tuning in. I definitely probably got a couple things wrong, especially with the scoring. I think it's actually an additional one point if you deceive someone. Now that I think about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the very basic rules overview um, for a fun game. It's a, it's a fun game if you if you have a bunch of people and you're trying to kind of give hints and hints that are specific but not too specific so that everyone gets your card and you don't get any points. You know, something vague that most players might have a card for. So yeah, that's the game Digs It. Um, I recommend it very much because anyone can play it uh, and again it's free right now on a print and play which i will link in the description so yeah um thank you for, again for tuning in on tuesdays at three um julie and sasha are still doing the book thief i believe um on thursdays chris at noon chris is still reading the hobbit and Friday at noon again, you can catch me on Family Fun Friday, except for today, because I <laughs> had something to do at 12. So yeah, um, usually we're live. So thank you for tuning in, and yeah, tune in again next week. See ya!